by a show of hands, how many of you can actually say you truly know who you are? And in fact, how many of you can say that you love everything about yourself? The reality is that it really took me to be in a wheelchair to find myself. And through the adversity and challenges that I face every day helped me in that process. I grew up in communities where it wasn't really a lot of mentors, it wasn't leaders. And what we thought of opportunity and success was it came to those that were lucky. Um, it was tough. And on top of that, I dealt with a lot of self-esteem issues because I, I was obese as a child. And I carried on in my teenage years until my early 20s. By the time I was 24, I had just got sole custody of my beautiful daughter. And I started to change the way I thought about life. I just wanted to be a responsible parent. And in my mind, still, I didn't have this ambition to be successful. I just knew that I had to do a little bit more to provide a better life for her than I had for myself. Five days after my 24th birthday, I was shot multiple times walking back to my vehicle. I remember that day just like it was yesterday. And I was staring at a man that I never knew a day of my life. And before I could react, I seen a flash of a gun and my body instantly collapsed. Well, where I come from, I thought I was dead. When people, die, when people get shot, you don't never see them actually live. So at that point, all I had was a mind full of regrets. And I didn't, I, I mean, <laughs> the biggest regret was I couldn't provide this life for my little girl. I woke up in a hospital. And all I could do was witness family and friends coming back and forth. I had a tube in my throat and I was in ICU. At that time, the only thing I was happy about was that I was alive. I didn't know the challenges that I was about to face in life. It took about two weeks when reality set in and I was told that I had suffered a T11, T12, incomplete spinal cord injury that would leave me paralyzed for the rest of my life. And at that point, I couldn't accept that. I had already lived my life always trying to fit in. I didn't really know the meaning of being different. Society is built on us always trying to figure out how we can be normal. And for me, there was no way I could be normal anymore. I was going to be seen different by everybody around me. Well, that sunk put me in depression. And it, and, it, and it weighed over me so much that I hated myself. I didn't love who I was. I hated who I became. And how could I be a father when I, can't even, I don't even feel like a man? But I had a little girl that never seen a disability. She seen a father. And so if I wanted to do something for myself, then the biggest, the, the biggest impact was going to be to show her strength through my weakness. I didn't know how to do it. After the first year of me being paralyzed, I was diagnosed with a, uh, a pressure ulcer on my tailbone, which led to two years bed rest and six surgeries. I faced defeat like dead on. I was defeated, and there was no way that I was, I was getting out of this. Um, I just thought that my life was just over. I mean, I, I, dwelled, I dwelled in pity. But again, I had this little girl that never seen a disability. I remember going to the doctor and asking you know, him, what can I do to be more active in my daughter's life? How can I you know, be able to inspire her despite how I feel about myself? He said something simple, but it wasn't so simple. He said, add more protein to your diet. It'll help with your, your wound healing. I'm like, I don't really know what, pro you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it, to me, I mean, that was McDonald's, you know. It was a couple Big Macs. So um, I was on bed rest for 21 hours a day. That was one of the toughest times of my life. 
but for those three, three hours that I could get out, I went to school. I went to school to be a dietitian. I learned nutrition on a higher scale and fell in love with it. In a year's time, I had lost 100 pounds. I felt good. My mindset changed. Being different wasn't too bad because I had accomplished something that I could never accomplish when I was walking. I had confidence now. It was amazing how I felt. And I was still healing and recovering from these surgeries. I remember I had six weeks left uh, from my last surgery, and I came up with the Disabled But Not Really Foundation. Because at that point, I had did something I had never seen someone with a disability do, and that was overcome the, your life challenges, overcome something that anyone else would have thought that, you know, <laughs> was a hard thing, but I overcame it, and I felt good about it. But I couldn't be selfish. I had to help someone else. This person that I had became was someone that I had never knew, but it was always inside of me. After I left the hospital, I started this mission where I wanted to go and inspire and impact and show people that opportunities come to those that create it, that if you believe in yourself and you believe in what you can do, then you can create it. It became a big thing, and I kept constantly going back and trying to heal myself. And I couldn't, I couldn't hold over my head that a man that I never knew put me in this position when he actually gave me the best life that I ever had. Like, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm truly blessed with the life that I have today. And I couldn't have it without that man. I couldn't have it if he didn't shoot me. And... That alone, for me to understand that and understand that this is my purpose and see the impact that I'm providing for people within my community is just clarification of allowing me to see that this, this was meant for me. I have become an award-winning adaptive athlete where I compete in CrossFit and bodybuilding nationwide. I never lifted a weight before my accident. <laughs> And I never ate healthy. And now I'm, I'm out and I'm, I'm, I'm training and I'm inspiring. But again, I'm a father. And the biggest impact is that I got this little girl that believes more in herself at nine years old than I ever think I, I did at that age. What, what gets me there? I face adversity every time I wake up. My legs don't work. If I can get out the bed, then I can take over the world. And that's my mindset every day. Every day I get up. That's my mindset when I go out and I go and inspire those in my situation and show them that they can be more and they cannot allow their struggle to be their identity. We have to understand that who we are is the ultimate goal is when you figure it out. It took me 26 years to find myself. And it took me to not have the use of my legs to understand that I was paralyzed mentally before I ever became paralyzed physically. I had limited myself to so many things in life, and now I'm just taking off. It's all because I love who I am, and I have embraced my reality. I sit in front of everyone today and I say, <laughs> embrace who you are. I'm different, but I love it. I don't care about walking because this made me who I am. My life is amazing. And to that man that shot me, that thought he was taking my life, he gave me life. And that's the most powerful message that I can provide to anybody. It's even though when the things seem like it's the toughest times and it's harder for you to cope, Greatness is right on the other side. I am two powerful words. And what you put after that shapes your reality. I am great. I am confident. I am abundant. I am amazing. I am blessed. I am grateful. I am happy. I am free. And when I speak about being free, 
I faced the man that shot me several weeks ago. And I was able to tell that man, thank you for giving me this life. The thing is, is that you cannot be completely free when you're holding something over your head. Instead, I was able to free myself and be in front of everybody else with this smile on my face because it was, I'm liberated. It was, it, it was such an amazing feeling. So I just tell you, if you know yourself, then you make sure that you don't hold anything that's going to stop you from being free. I am disabled, but not really. I am Wesley Hamilton. Thank you.